In this video trailer, we're going to look at if you lose after winning, ask yourself these six questions. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. So if like me, you've been through spells where you've made really, really good success, you've made lots and lots of good winners and all of a sudden you have a losing streak or you make big losers or you kind of undo some of that good work, you might have to stop and ask yourself why this is happening. So from Ari Kiev's book, Trading to Win, there are six questions you need to ask yourself when you have a loser after a winning streak. Okay, so first thing is, do you relax too much and retreat to your comfort zone? This is probably the biggest thing for most traders. You have a good run of winners, whether that's over the week, whether that's the month, whatever it may be. You think, hey, this is all good. I've got lots of cash flow. My account's looking nice and fat. I've made good trades. I can chill out a bit. I don't need to apply the same pressure. And that's probably subconsciously. That's not going to be consciously. That's like, hey, I can back off the throttle. Things are going okay. Let me just cruise along. And inevitably, that winning streak starts to tail off and then you start to kind of panic a little bit and then you have that big loser or you have a losing streak that undoes a lot of that good work. So watching out for that, retreating back into the comfort zone because probably to get to that accelerated growth level, to get to the point where you've had that blast, if you like, in account equity, you probably put more effort in. You've probably stayed up a little bit longer just doing a bit more research on your trades. You've probably put a little bit more homework into the trades that you're going to pull trigger on. You've probably worked on yourself. You've probably done you know, some exercise physically. You've probably put a whole lot of extra effort in that's actually cumulatively helped in this. And then what starts happening is you start dropping off one or two of those things and that ultimately causes that losers afterwards, that losing spell afterwards. Number two, does it become harder to keep stepping forward into uncertainty? Interestingly, as we improve in traders, we have to kind of keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Doing the same thing very rarely gets us where we want to go. We might get some progress and progress, but at some point we have to adapt. We kind of have to increase our position size. We have to adjust how we're trading for our new account size, all this kind of stuff. So we're constantly stretching ourselves, especially with the position size increase. If you have done that and you're kind of stretching your position size aggressively, you know how painful that can get. You have to back off and you have to keep pushing and pushing. That's a very challenging time. So does it become harder for you to keep stepping forward? So your account equity is growing. Do you find that, hey, this is becoming too much now. I'm going to have to do, I'm doing so much work and this and the other. Uh, and then you kind of back off the throttle a bit. And of course, when you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. And the third one is, do you stop making the extra calculation or whatever additional effort ensured your progress? Similar to one. But there is something that you have done which you would do well to identify which has caused your extreme growth or your good series of winning trades. It's something or it's a series, a sequence of events or multiple different things that you've done that's helped you do this. So identifying those, is it the pre-market routine? Is it the trade filtering? Is it this? Is it that? Is it a combination? And then what happens is you stop making that extra effort or whatever additional effort, let's put additional effort, I've just copied this verbatim, uh, into your trades to ensure your progress. You stop doing that and of course you start moving backwards. So number four, do you stop learning and improving? You know, inevitably we move forward when we are, you know, kind of in, in, in not doing so well. We kind of seek knowledge, we seek books, we seek videos, we seek kind of audios, whatever it may be. We want to learn and want to improve. How do I get better at trading this strategy? How do I deal with this discipline issue? How do I do this? How do I do that? Taking stuff from videos like this and others and stuff on YouTube and paid courses and all this kind of stuff, great, you learn, you improve. What happens is as we start to get better, as we start to see the improvements, we tend to back off that. We tend to not be so keen and thirst for knowledge. We think, you know what, it's working for us, don't need any more input. Rather than that constant knowledge input and growth and, and kind of just new stuff that's coming in, not, not talking about noise, I'm talking about useful information that's helping us improve on what we've got. So we build the foundation, we build bigger, we grow, we build, we build. Whereas opposed to when we get here, sometimes we forget about adding the extra stuff to it and ultimately that crumbles. So it's, it's about cons consistent learning, consistent improving, even when we're seeing growth. In actual fact, in my experience, guys, when you've got a good, 
kind of good account balance growth, that's when you put the throttle right down. That's when you double down on your effort. That's when you double down on your learning, your improving, your reading, your self-awareness, all the stuff, because that's when the account really starts to accelerate and you can do some significant kind of damage or significant improvement, should I say, uh, to your PL. All right, number five, do you stop doing the same level of trade analysis as before? Similar kind of thing, but what's the process for specifically for analysis? You start to now shoot from the hip a little bit more. You start to feel like you've got a cushion. Hey, I've got an extra this amount of money in my account. It doesn't matter if the trades don't go so well. I don't have to worry about it so much. Whereas when you're right on the line, you feel like everything is really, really important. You take extra care to analyze your trades very, very carefully. Make sure that they're on the A grade setups. Make sure they've got a decent proportional stop, make sure the risk reward ratio is good. All the kind of stuff that you would do when you start getting a little bit more into the winning area, you start to become a bit more blase. You start to think, you know what, I don't need to be that cautious about it. And of course, as we know, it just doesn't work that way, guys. You've got to keep your foot on the throttle or come off completely and take a break. If you want to do that, I think that's a very, very good idea. After a winning streak, you go, bang, I'm doing very, very well, right. Bung, shut the engine down, shut the computer down, go away, come back, refresh, reset, have that account balance as a new benchmark, and then start again using the same processes that you had to get to that benchmark. There's a, there's a, a famous trader out there who often imagines when he goes into trading that he's in drawdown on the day because he knows that he trades better from drawdown than he does from a place of making money. So he imagines his equity curve like that every day. So he's got to fight, he's got to make sure he's taking the right trades, he's got to do this. And then that's what he imagines himself getting back to there. In reality, he's probably like this. But if he looks at that and he thinks he's, so, he's right at account balance highs, he doesn't perform as well for these reasons. Final one I've got here for you guys is, do you seek a new high level of confirmation that means you miss great trades? So this is kind of flips it on its head a little bit. Rather than I'm not doing enough analysis, this is kind of overanalyzing, thinking, oh, you know what, I need to make sure that I protect this, I need to over, I need to kind of really make sure everything's lined up. And, you know, if you imagine you kind of got a, you know, a meter here, that's what you were doing that was doing right. If you're backing off, it kind of goes to here. If you're going too intense, it goes to here. Both aren't conducive to good trading. You just need to continue to do what you are doing. And if that means you've got to stop and reassess and have a look exactly what you were doing, because sometimes it's not obvious, Sometimes the processes and things you were doing outside of markets and in markets aren't as obvious, but identifying those and saying, hey, I need to make sure I repeat that. What was I doing? Let me repeat that. Let me don't go too excessive with it. Let me don't back off. Let me just repeat what I was doing because if I do that and I keep at it, I will make more gains and more gains and more gains and more gains and I'll keep on that equity curve increase until things start changing. That's when I'll back off, take a break and reassess the situation. Okay, guys, so very common thing after a winning streak or big winners, whatever it is, new account highs, having that loser, these six things will help you eliminate that or minimize it at best. If you can minimize it, if you can cut it in by two thirds or whatever, and you can just have a small drawdown before you recognize and go back into action, your PL is going to be way higher than it was if you hadn't.